and am I live? <laughs> Let's see. I always like that notification, you know, just to make sure. I'll check my phone. And of course, I love when I see there's uh, viewers. Oh, yes, that sounds great. I'll check my phone. Yes. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> Lovely. Let me turn that off. Fabulous. Okay, and we should be streaming live to the Janome Canada Facebook page, Janome Sewing Machines Facebook page, Janome Canada, uh, Janome HQ YouTube, and Janome America's YouTube channel. That's what it should be, uh, provided technology works. <laughs> so yes, isn't that wonderful that we can be everywhere? That's what we're trying to do, share the Janome love with you all everywhere so it's wonderful oh hello raggedy and raggedy anna six hello hello it is great to see you wonderful this is absolutely fabulous oh yay we're getting lots of viewers this is fabulous just what i was hoping for oh there's always a uh, delay uh yes i have an air thread serger oh that's excellent i'm actually going to be demoing on the at 2000d but you know what i'm going to show you today we're talking all about serger accessories and i know i will run out of time so we'll just have to do more but they all fit all genome sergers so it doesn't matter which model you have oh lovely hello from france hello hello yes it's wonderful it is so great to see everyone oh from california from georgia oh lovely I hope it's a fabulous day where you are in the world from Kansas. Hello. Uh, it's here and rainy and overcast in my palatial estate in Collingwood, Ontario, Canada. But I would say, great, no matter what the weather, just stay inside and so. <laughs> so, yes, I see it's three o'clock already. So, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today. I am Michael Smith, the National Education Manager of Genome Canada, and I'm back live here in the Genome Sewing Machines Facebook page. But again, we're now streaming live to Genome Canada and the Genome America YouTube channel and Genome Canada YouTube channel so we can share the Genome love as much as possible. And today we're uh, going to talk about serger accessories, regardless of which model you have. April is National Serger Month, so how fabulous. And again, all of these uh, specialty presser feet are available from your Janome dealer. So if they don't have them in stock, they can always order them from, you know, Janome America's warehouse or Janome Canada's warehouse, uh, respectively. So let me flip around here. Boom, I am my very full table. So we can see, yes, this fabulous AT2000D air thread serger. But again, there's so many sergers in the Janome line so double check with your dealer. Why do you need a serger? Oh, well, they're about twice as fast as the regular sewing machines. And again, originally developed in the garment industry to finish our seams, even these thicker fabrics here, quilted fabrics, to finish them all very beautifully. So again, now this is a knit fabric. It's not going to ravel, but again, how beautiful is that we can uh, construct on the serger and finish off the raw edge twice as fast as a regular sewing machine. But of course, we can do so much more. Oh my gosh, Donna is here. Hello. Great to see you. So much more. So for example, did you ever think that you could hem on your serger. This is a blind hem. Now we can do a blind hem on the sewing machine, but now we can do it on the serger. You'll see my little bits of red thread showing through, but if this were white, you'd never see it. There is my beautiful serger stitch, all finished. So we can do uh, finishing off that raw edge and creating this blind hem all in one step with the aid of the fabulous serger blind hem foot. Now it does have an adjustable knob as some of our blind hem feet do for our sewing machine, this adjustable knob and this little fence will move over to the right or to the left. If you have a really thick fabric, you'll move it a little further away to compensate for the fold of that fabric. This is uh, not too thick, so I'll move it a little closer to the guide of the foot, the edge of the foot there. So this guide, we're going to run the fold of our blind hem, uh, the fold of our fabric up against that fence. So uh, just like on our domestic sewing machines, there's a little knob here on the back of the presser foot holder 
that is gonna release that foot, our regular foot, put that out of the way. And then we're just gonna slide this one on. Now there's this little metal, uh, it's a big thick wire. And what this wire is that's in front of all the feet, this is what uh, helps keep the pressure down on our presser foot. If this wire is in your way, you can either, uh, just move it up a little bit as I am now with my finger, or you can move it out of the way. You don't want to remove it entirely. <laughs> a lady once said to me, she had her husband remove it. It was in her way. Don't remove it. It's there for a reason. Uh, but then we can click up at the toe of our foot to help click it in to place as it is. So we want that, you know, thicker wire again, purposely on our foot to do this. So let's raise that up out of the way. Now our serger I have set up, now there's full instructions in the blister pack with all of these extra feet. But I have uh, my left needle right now that I'm using and all of my tensions, left needle is at three, I'm not using the right needle, uh, but it is set at three, which is like the standard default. Uh, upper looper is three, lower looper is three. In our AT2000D, we have integrated stitch. Length dial is this larger dial closer to the machine. This is the differential feed dial, the smaller dial. They're integrated, but on all genomic sergers, there's usually two dials, one for stitch length, one for differential feed. Differ uh, the stitch length, I have a four. Differential feed, I have a one. Some of our sergers have this standard or tight knob to do the pre-tension of the lower looper. I have it on standard. So just regular setup here. And I do have my knife blade activated for doing this blind hem. And you know, just like we create our blind hem on our sewing machine, we have the right side of the fabric down. We fold up our hem like that and then we're just going to do a little pinch like that so again uh, right sides down fold up your hem and just do a little pinch like this and this fold is what we're going to run along this fence and it works out so beautifully so let's get started there foot down and away we go so we just butt this fold up against that guide, we're trimming off the excess and finishing our hem edge all in one step. Now we have a remote uh, side thread cutter here at the side, very convenient. Look at that, very beautiful on the inside and on the out, oh my gosh, we barely see that. And again, that is the joy of using it, of how you set your guide, the closer the guide, then the less of a bite you're going to see. Now, this is felt fabric, so it's um, a little bit uh, fluffier, you know, so it depends on your fabric. Polar fleece, this would be perfect. You'd never see it. Again, this, my guide was set a little further, so you may see a little bit, but not at all. You know, again, if this were white, you'd never see it. So the cool thing is you make yourself these little samples and even here, you label them as I have standard, and then I use my, again, my left needle three tension, lower or upper looper three, lower looper three. You see a little bit of that red thread here. This is, uh, oh, like flannel. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm afraid to use my surgery because of thick fabrics. Oh, uh, so long as you can, when you raise your presser foot and so long as you can get your fabric under there that's basically about as thick as you can go uh just to experiment but on your sergers they're quite uh heavy duty that they can really take a lot uh now you'll see when i did this sample oh you can see a little bit of my upper looper thread there that doesn't look so great so you do your little test sample again adjusting things like oh i tightened my upper looper to an eight. So when we're adjusting our tensions, we're going up higher, or I think of up tight. And then I lowered my lower looper down to a one. So then in this case, it was down low. And then boom, look how beautiful that stitching is. That turned out perfectly. There you can see that upper looper thread right on the edge as the upper looper 
intersects in this case with the lower looper. So that worked out beautifully. So you learn and experiment. Uh, last week I did talk about threading your serger and I talked a little bit about tensions there. Uh, but again, you can go back to the Genomi HQ YouTube channel. I have the Genomi Serger School playlist. Go to Genomi America's YouTube channel. Uh, our Genomi Life blog, there's lots of blogs about adjusting the tensions on your serger, all of that. But you do these little test samples and then you record all of this. So then the next time you go to do a blind hem, now you have that reference library because you won't necessarily be using these all the time, but like everything else, the more you have, the more you will use it. So let's get our blind hem foot out of the way. That is wonderful. Now, another fabulous attachment is the elastic gathering attachment. So if you want to gather, now sure, our knit fabrics have some stretch to it. This is just regular woven fabric. If you want to add some stretch, how about attaching some elastic to your fabric? Again, this could be Garment sewing, sure, a waistband, this could be a cute little skirt, this could be ruffles on an apron. How about home deck? This could be ruffling there. Uh, you know, again, it could be a ruffle there. There's so many applications for adding elastic. So this elastic gathering attachment can work on all Janome sergers if you open your little side cover here. If you have a screw right at the front of your serger, as I believe all of them do, then we can use this elastic gathering attachment. So these large handle screwdrivers, they do come with a number of Janome sergers. If yours does not, you can get these in a separate blister pack. I really like using them for this application. It just gives me a little more torque to make sure that screw is tightened. So that works out well, and then we need a foot. We can use our regular presser foot again. I will just turn that up. So then when we put this on and snap, boom, just snaps into place, you'll see that this elastic gathering attachment is raised above the bed. So we can put our fabric underneath, and then the elastic I have quartered uh, just as we typically will do elastic, again, I have oops, quartered it there. So I have little markings on my elastic, and I have little quarter marks on my uh, fabric there in order to correspond. Cut your elastic longer, so then it'll help get started. Whoops, let me start it. <laughs> now this uh, elastic gather attachment, there's this little trap door here we open the elastic gathering attachment to put this under. Now, the size of the elastic is approximately about three eighths of an inch that you can use. This is about a quarter of an inch. And then we just lock that into place. Now this little set screw on the top here, if we turn this clockwise, that's gonna add a little more pressure to this elastic. So it'll gather up a little more. I just want to be able to see my lines. <laughs> uh, so then uh, again, that we can adjust the uh, pressure on the elastic to make it gather more. Uh, as well, we can also, you know, stretch the elastic will cause it to gather more. So I'm just going to do this. Whoops, let's drop our foot. <laughs> what I love about the AT2000D, the machine will not operate if you do not have it set up correctly. So again, we can just pull the elastic however much we need to uh, coincide with our markings. We can undo that little trap door, side thread cutter, and boom. Isn't that so cool? So even this woven fabric can now become stretchy because of that elastic gathering attachment. It is so cool. Uh, yes, uh, if the... AT2000D had a free arm. Well, we have the FA4 serger that does have a free arm. So there are some um, compromises, uh, but yes, then we can really do a lot with our serger. So their elastic gathering attachment for your woven fabrics works really well. Super simple. You, and again, I have not adjusted 
a thing. I've left on my machine exactly how it is. All I'm doing is using the attachments or the specialty feet to do different effects to really help you get the most from your serger. Now, probably my most favorite attachment, and again, I'm going fast and furious because I'm trying to show as much as possible. You can always go back and review this presentation pause it as you need since i'm going so fast that's the joy though that these presentations stay stave under the media tab on the respective facebook pages so you can go back and review whenever you wish or same on youtube so this little beading foot you'll see a very small profile and it's got that little notch underneath it so it allows you to feed the beads underneath it so it comes in a blister pack like this with this foot and this guide that will help you, it's a channel that will help you feed the beads or yarn directly in line with the foot. Now you'll see this arm is slightly curved because of this knob here, this adjustment knob on the AT2000D. If you have an older beading attachment, this is what it looked like and you'll see that arm is not compatible. This older version is not compatible with the AT2000D, but it is with every other Janome serger. This beading attachment is the new one, again, to compensate for that knob of the AT2000D. So there is the part number of the new beading attachment to go around that knob on the AT2000D, and it comes with, as you'll see there, the little guide and the foot. So it works really good. So this little foot, and again, if that bar is in your way, that uh, wire, you can bend that wire out of place to then try to get this foot exactly where you need it. Use your little screwdriver if you need to ooh, pull it up and out of the way. And then I'm not quite on. Now I'm clicked in and then now, yes, we can move that wire back into play. And again, this beading attachment is going to go on just like the attachment for our uh, elastic gathering. But before I put it on, I should remove my knife blade. That is something the blister pack uh, recommends. So on the AT2000D down here is the knob to release the knife blade. So let me just turn that around. Whoops. <laughs> let me just turn that around. There we go. So many parts and pieces as I'm trying to rush. And then there, now I can move that looper cover out of the way, get this in, boom. So yes, it really helps if you retract the knife blade, you can consult your instruction manual how to do so. Uh, but it really makes it good to retract it. So then that way, again, this line of beads goes directly under that hole in the foot. Now, the guide is really good. I suggest you take these to your craft store, purchase them first, take them to your craft store and make sure, because like this row of beads, for example, this is too big. It's not going to go through this channel. It's not going to go in that little groove of the foot this beautiful yarn, for example, will do just beautifully. So again, you make sure that you take your string, uh, you take your feet uh, to make sure your string of beads or your yarn will fit through. Now here's some beads. All I did was fold up a hem and then run this through the serger. And now this could become how elegant that would be on a sleeve or on a hem or even I was thinking a quilt binding. Wouldn't that be cool? Fold it over and that's your quilt binding. And then you just, with maybe a zipper foot, stitch next to it to top stitch it down. Or if beads aren't your thing, again, think of bridal, cosplay, figure skating costumes. But if beads are not your thing, oh, how about yarn could be our cuff or maybe this is on a tote bag or again, uh, quilting. There's so many things we could do. How about adding a little bit of yarn as like a pin tuck or a little string of beads as a pin tuck in a garment or again a tote bag, a quilt. You can add so much texture and especially when you match your uh, thread with your yarn, you really don't see it at all. 
you can have so much fun. I wish I had time to take up knitting and crocheting, but I can get my yarn fix through couching and using the beading foot and beading attachment. We're basically couching the yarn on with our serger. So we can couch uh, yarn with our yarns in thin trims on our domestic sewing machines. Uh, we've got a free motion couching foot for the high shank machines. We can do embroidery couching on our embroidery machines, and now we can use couching with the beading foot and beading attachment on our sergers. So here, I just did a regular seam, put it through the serger, but I had some yarn in between, so now that caught the yarn in the seam. So add a little bit of texture. Again, this could be a quilt, a tote bag, or how about just adding the yarn on the edge? We can add a little bit of bling isn't that cool so there's so much that we can do so in this sample for example this whole quilt was made on the serger the, all this piecing was done on the serger just straight lines so simple but there with this couching on the edge as a little trim and then on the very edge of the quilt as opposed to binding i didn't want to bind this this is like a, a picnic blanket that you would take out and uh you know kids would play on it's a big checkerboard uh but there so the yarn is couched to the edge of the quilt very fast and easy you can find the yarn anywhere i get them at the um dollar store <laughs> so it's nice and uh, inexpensive but yeah you can really have a lot of fun with these yarns this was a designer yarn uh, again, you can have lots of fun. So this beading attachment, again, so simple. And we have our yarn that is going under that foot and it's going in the guide. I'm going to butt the fabric up against that guide. And again, if this were a string of pearls, this is why it's good to remove that knife blade that we don't have to worry about that uh, knife hitting the pearls. And again, I've got my left needle. My stitch length was at four. It could be at any length you want it to be. But so simple. And again, I haven't really adjusted my serger at all. I'm just using the extra feet and attachments. There we go. How beautiful. Oh, I didn't catch my lower layer of fabric, but that's fine. Again, it's a quick sample. But again, how beautiful, how beautiful is that? So very simple, very easy to do with the beading attachment. And now as I quickly go on to my next favorite, I'm really torn between this beading attachment and this next attachment, because uh, when we talk about you know bling and we want to add a little more to our projects, then this next foot is called the gathering foot, the G foot, and it looks very similar to the regular serger foot, except it's got this little hump here on the back. And that little hump helps us create gathers. So let's attach this. And it's very cool, this gathering foot. Now there are full instructions in the blister pack. Uh, it suggests that we tighten, whoops, tighten our tension. So in this case, I'm using my left needle. So I'm going to tighten it up to a seven. And then I'm also going to tighten up my lower looper here also to a seven. Now with the, again, stitch length could be whatever you wish. Generally more gathers, the longer your stitch. So I'll keep it at four. I could set it to five. Now differential feed is at one. So this little sample again you always do your samples so here this edge i cut this fabric out this edge is standard normal but then you'll see when i match up the cut edges at the bottom it gathered a little bit so i have my uh, needle at seven my lower looper at seven according to the blister pack uh, i have my differential feet at one and the stitch length is at four so you'll see it gathered a little bit fine let's say that we're oh we're doing setting in a sleeve and instead of pulling those two rows of basting stitches to ease in our fabric we can just put on the gathering foot tighten up these tensions and that slightly gathers so this could be the arms eye 
a sleeve in the arm size. So then that prevents us from having to pull those uh, parallel lines of basting stitches. I hated doing that. <laughs> so this is a much easier alternative. But when I turned that differential feed knob up to two, oh, look at this, look at that magic. So again, there is my straight edge that I started with and boom, do you see how it condenses it? So the differential feed, there's a great uh, many blogs on Janome Life blog that explains differential feed, but that's basically like an upper set of feed dogs uh, it's almost like our AccuFeed FlexFoot. Uh, it's an upper set of feed dogs for your serger. So we've got the lower set of feed dogs feeding the lower layer of fabric. The uh, differential feed will feed the upper uh, fabric, basically. So there, boom, look at how much that's gathered. So when you want to do your home deck and all your gathers around a pillow, for example, Look at all that that you can create very simply, very easily. And I will just put this down. Oh, now I am going to raise up my knife. because I do want to trim my fabric. There we go. Whoops. Make sure that's up in its highest position. There, that's good. Okay, so then let's just do this. And look at that. I mean, oh my gosh, you can just go to town. Is that much faster than your two parallel rows of stitching that inevitably break? Look at that. So this could be all around a pillow, a pillow sham. This could be, again, how about a ruffle for a cuff? So yes, we can do kind of ruffling with our elastic gathering attachment or with this gathering foot. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, the cool thing is, of course, we could do more. So I gathered one side of the fabric, then I gathered the other, and you'll see it's kind of puffy in between. What this is known as is actually an heirloom sewing. It's called a puffing strip. Uh, why together video English and the video in French, please? Uh, yeah, some of our videos we do in French uh, with Celine, uh, who does uh, videos on Tuesdays. She does a, a French video first at 2 p.m. Eastern on Janome Canada's Facebook page and Janome HQ YouTube channel, and then at 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday here in Janome Sewing Machines page, um, she does an English version. So then, yes, this puffing strip is, uh, again, for heirloom sewing, but we can do that very easily using the gathering foot on either side. Now, we can also create gathers on a flat piece of fabric. Imagine this is a drapes, this is a pillow, this could be, uh, again, the shoulder seam, and then this could be a cute little sleeve edge for our summer and spring clothing. Uh, again, it could be an apron. Uh, that we can again gather to a flat piece of fabric. And how we do so, the fabulous gathering attachment. So this is very cool, comes in a separate blister pack. And again, we open up the cover and get in again that little screw. There we go. So, so long as your serger has the front screw, you can use all of these attachments. They work so well. So this gathering attachment works in conjunction with the gathering foot. And what I'm going to do, the strip that you want gathered, you put down against your feed dogs. So I'm just going to get this started. So the gathered strip is going to go closest to the feed dogs. This little arm that swings over, I consider it like a diverter. And what we're going to do then, it's going to stop us from gathering this fabric, the top fabric. So the bottom fabric is going to get gathered. The top fabric is not. So let me see. So I'm going to just start this a little bit just to get it started. And then I'm gonna swing this diverter and click it under the foot. 
So then that way it's not going to gather that top edge of the fabric. Oh, and of course, <laughs> as I'm doing this demo, doesn't my serger come unthreaded? Of course. <laughs> but I can show you, and again, if I had a little more time, I would thread this on air because uh, I think it's just my needle uh, thread came out. And we have built-in needle threaders in the AT2000D, but I'm already at my 30-minute time, so I will just show you again, look, on this sample, of course, that worked beautifully. So we can gather a lower piece of fabric and not gather the upper piece of fabric using the gathering attachment and gathering foot. So there's so many things that you can get. Oh, if we had time, we can get cording feet so we can do our own wire ribbon. And we have a cording foot A and cording foot B. Now there are uh, videos on the Genomi HQ YouTube channel where I did, oh, some holiday decorating and you saw me, uh, I made that wire ribbon there using those cording feet. So those videos are in the Genomi Serger School on Genomi HQ uh, YouTube channel. We also have two different piping feet for your serger. So yes, we can create serger piping so how beautiful is that for, again, garments, tote bags, quilting, home deck? So again, we'll just have to do more to demo all of those. Now, yes, we can find more instructions about all of our Genomi sergers in the instruction manuals, but there's also a fabulous workbook for the AT2000D air thread serger. Now, even if you don't have an air thread serger, we can still find out more techniques and more little tips and tricks about uh, different types of, in this case, the three thread stitches, lots of information, or about two threads. A lot of our sergers convert from a four thread to a three thread. Some even do a two thread. Oh, and then there we're talking about that lettuce leaf edge. And again, most of our genomic sergers can do all of these different techniques. So this is where the workbook, yes, it's designed expressly for the AT2000D, but a lot of the tips and tricks that are in here can also apply to your other sergers. Now, when I mentioned uh, about our uh, little samples in here, this big binder, I put them all in page protectors and I do all these little samples and I have here that this is a four thread. This is done on some uh, lightweight knit fabric, you know, great for like slips and lingerie, but I have three representing my left needle tension. Uh, three was the right needle. Three was the upper looper. Three was the lower looper. Three was my stitch length and my differential feed was at 1.0. So so you make yourself these little samples about all your little different techniques. And this is where you build yourself this whole resource library. This was on some denim. So we can use sergers for all kinds of different fabrics, some rolled hem samples. They look a little different based on your fabrics. There, even serger using some of this lacy little fabric. And oh, when you have some trouble with your stitches, you can put some water soluble stabilizer on top to help support your stitches. That's exactly what I did. Look at this edge here. It's all roughly and you know not so great. This laid perfectly flat and all I did was put some water soluble stabilizer on top of my fabric, did my seam and then I could rip it off and then dissolve it later. So little samples like that, make yourself, it's worth the time, cut up all these little samples, make yourself these little samples. Uh, for my gathering, for example, how much gathering? Well, there, my needle tension was set at number seven, my length was five, my differential feed was one. So you can see the differences of the strip based on there, this was the same. This was a 22 inch strip and it went down to 17 inches. So I started at 22 inches and then I adjusted it to a stitch uh, length four. Seven was my needle uh, tension and then 1.0 differential feed. So look at how much difference. This was set to number five. Look at how much that went, you know, so again, that you do yourself these little samples 
And then you can learn way more about your machine. And by having all these fabulous extra specialty presser feed and accessories from your Janome dealer lets you get more from your machine. So let me quickly flip around and say thank you everyone so much for joining me today. Again, it's always such a whirlwind. And yes, I try to answer people's questions as they come in. So yes, more serger videos, please. Yes, we will certainly try to do an effective, like regular videos as well, not just these lives, but regular videos. I'm trying to load more, get them filmed, edited more for the Genome HQ YouTube channel and certainly Genome America as well. They have a beautiful uh, recording studio in their office to try to get more videos, yes, and including videos on the M8 and HD9. But there's always so much. So we're certainly trying to get the Janome love out there as much as we can. So thank you everyone so much for joining me and I hope you have a fabulous day. Bye.